When it comes to being on a diet or eating healthier, there is one major variable that makes it hard. And that is we wanna eat the things that we cannot eat. But is it true that you aren't allowed to eat them? Why can't we have pizza, fried chicken sandwiches, burgers, burritos? I say nay. So I'm running you through the top 10 no-no foods that you can't eat and making them diet and health friendly. So let's begin. Really important, I gave a one-of-one custom-made knife away for people who bought my book in the spicy burger video. And it is a pleasure to announce we have a winner. Congratulations to Dionys, the winner of the custom knife from Pie Cutlery. This is a handmade knife. This is the Thor's hammer of a knife. He promised it. It finally made it to him. It takes a while to make a knife. Hand forged, all those good things. Thank you to Pie Cutlery for doing the work. I mean, this is a beautiful knife. Look at this thing. And look how cute Dionys is. Look how happy he is. Dionys, thank you. We love you. And we also love you who's watching this video right now. Maybe next time you can win a knife. And also don't forget to get the book. Love you. It's upside down. It is. First up, the breakfast burrito. There's all sorts of breakfast burritos, but let's say you ordered a breakfast burrito with chorizo cheese and refried beans. That would come out to around 1,100 calories, 70 grams of fat, 55 grams of carbohydrates, and well, a good 56 grams of protein. We can do much better. This recipe will make four good sized burritos, but can make more depending on how much filling you use and how big your tortillas are. We're gonna start by making our diet friendly chorizo. To a blender, add one teaspoon or two grams of coriander seeds and blend on high until the seeds become a powder. Then add two whole Whole cloves of garlic, a quarter teaspoon or one gram of ground cinnamon, two teaspoons or eight grams of ground cumin, two teaspoons or eight grams of kosher salt, three tablespoons or 45 grams of white distilled vinegar, half a teaspoon or two grams of onion powder, four ounces or 115 grams of chopped smoked ham. I know it's a little weird. Hear me out. One ancho chili and two guajillo chilies, both of which have been soaked in hot water until very soft. Don't throw the water away. You will need it in a second. Blend on high until as smooth as possible using one tablespoon of your chili soaking water at a time just to loosen if needed. Now, now, to a large bowl, add one pound or 450 grams of 95% lean ground beef. Add in your blended chili mixture. This is gonna add your chorizo flavor and moisture. Mix by hand until completely homogenous. Heat a large nonstick pan over medium high. Once hot, add all your chorizo mixture to the pan. Stir constantly using a spatula to help everything cook evenly. Then at the end, use a potato masher. This is a top secret tip. You don't have to do this. To mash as finely as possible. Continue to toss and cook till cooked through. You got some crispy bits, but not completely dry. There should be some juiciness to this. Now moving on to the eggs. We're making cheesy egg whites. Heat a large nonstick pan over medium heat. Add two teaspoons or eight grams of unsalted butter. Once the butter is melted, add in your egg whites, season lightly with salt, and cook stirring often. Now, as soon as the egg whites begin to set, add one ounce of low moisture skim mozzarella and one ounce of cheddar, about 27 grams each. Look, you can obviously use full fat or low fat cheddar. The macros depend on how much fat goes in, so, you know, choose to your discretion. The macros we used will be reflecting if you were to use low fat cheese, you know, as opposed to regular. Not a fan of it. Obviously, you can use regular, which is my preference, but that'll be higher calorie. Cut off the heat and fold together until the cheese is melted. Now let's make a simple little pico de gallo, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> to a medium-sized mixing bowl, add one large diced tomato, half an onion, finely diced, half a bunch of finely chopped cilantro, and the zest of one lime. Season taste with salt and the juice of your zested lime. Now, lightly toast a burrito-sized tortilla over an open flame. Now look, this could be a regular burrito tortilla or a low-carb tortilla. For our macros, we're using the low-carb one. Into that, around four ounces of your chorizo, followed by a heaping spoonful of your pico de gallo, a quarter of your cheesy egg whites. Roll that puppy up nice and toit. Toast seam side down in a large saute pan to help it stay close. Cut in half and got damn. That don't look like no diet burrito. So the normal version is 1,100 calories and our version 434 calories. Coming with just 13 grams of fat and if you're using a low carb tortilla, it's 33 grams of carbs and 59 grams of protein. Obviously, a real tortilla is better so understand swapping regular will up the carbs and calories. Your choice. So breakfast burrito. This is from a local restaurant. Most breakfast burritos are going to be built like this. Give a little taste. I mean, it's pretty good. It's ugly. It is what it is. I just need this to be just as good. That's all I need. Cheers. Listen, I hate and have always hated egg whites. This might be one of the only ways I think I could ever genuinely eat it and not hate myself. You essentially replaced what the yolk can do with lower fat cheeses. It doesn't go super high in calories. It stays super high in protein. And honestly, this beef chorizo, it's not fatty like I want it to be, but I'm not like upset that it's missing. If I don't get to have regular chorizo, but I get to have this on a diet, I'm stoked. All in all, this is a great breakfast burrito, but one of the best POVs. You can freeze them, then reheat them in the oven as you need them. So really you only prep once for multiple breakfasts. Moving on.
Now, the typical just plain two slices of French toast with a little bit of whipped cream, powdered sugar, and maple syrup comes out to 830 calories, 35 grams of fat, 115 grams of carbs, and 15 grams of protein. I don't even know how that's possible that it's even that high in protein. That's confusing. Can you even make this diet friendly? Well, look, if you can eat carbohydrates, you can. You're going to need two slices of a good quality bread, ideally sourdough because it's naturally leavened and fermented. First, on one of those, you're going to spread a thin layer of peanut butter. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not just any peanut butter. You want powdered peanut butter. I found this brand called PB2. This is not an ad. This is what I used. Mix it with a little bit of water and it comes out like peanut butter, but significantly lower in calories. And all it is is dehydrated peanut powder. Anyway, spread that onto one of your slices. Take your other slice and glue them together. Now we're going to give it a little bath. In a bowl or a quarter hotel pan, combine four egg whites, one whole egg, two teaspoons or five grams of Chinese five spice, a little pinch of salt, whisk together till combined, then whisk in one cup or 240 milliliters of any milk of your choice. That could be oat milk, almond milk, non-fat milk, whatever. They're all gonna change the macros slightly, so just be aware of that. But if you use something that's low fat, low calorie, then you're probably in a better spot. Add in your bread, let it soak. For about 15 seconds, flip and repeat on the other side. There's no perfect way to figure out exactly how much liquid the bread will absorb, but this is enough for four servings, so two slices of bread should get roughly a quarter of that. And look, the rest of this is very simple. You get a nonstick pan, you heat it over medium heat. Once it's hot, you put a little cooking spray in there, add your French toast, cook for two to three minutes, flip and cook for another two to three minutes. That is it. Now, a light dusting of powdered sugar adds a minuscule amount of carbohydrates and sugar. If you want maple syrup, you can go straight maple syrup if your macros fit it. There's sugar-free maple syrups, or you could just do fresh fruit. Now, for our French toast, you have two options. Option one, no syrup, which comes at the 238 calories, three grams of fat, 35 to 45 grams of carbs, depending on your bread choice, and 15 grams of protein. We removed 500 calories, 70 grams of carbs, and 32 grams of fat with our version. Now, option two, if you do use syrup, will be roughly 390 to 400 calories, three and a half grams of fat, 75 to 85 grams of carbs, depending on bread choice, and 15 grams of protein. Still 500 calories less and 31 grams of fat less. French toast. Mm. Probably one of my favorite diet friendly things you can make because it's really not that different from any other French toast. You just need to soak bread in something with egg-like properties and toast it in a pan. That is it. Is it missing maybe like a slight amount of richness? Absolutely. But honestly, I don't think you'll tell a massive, massive difference. It's a great French toast. This is a higher carbohydrate option. Is there a way to do it with lower carbohydrate? Sure. But it's going to be shit because you're going to use some sort of weird low carb bread. And those always taste like ah. So that you can't really get around. Start with a good product. You end with a good product. Moving on to the sausage. McMuffin. This, I've always felt like is a sandwich that never really satisfies. So I've got one that satisfies by itself. The macros on the McDonald's version aren't actually that bad. 480 calories, 31 grams of fat in a tiny little sandwich, 30 grams of carbs, and 20 grams of protein. And that's if you have an egg. If you don't put an egg, this thing's got basically no goddamn protein at all. Now onto my version. First, our sausage. This will make enough sausage patties for eight sandwiches. Each patty is three ounces. Now obviously you could do two patties per sandwich and you'll have a whole lot of protein on that sandwich for not that many more calories. So two medium mixing bowl, add half a pound or 225 grams of 95% lean ground beef, one pound or 450 grams of lean ground turkey. That could be 95% lean as well. Half a teaspoon or two grams of ground fennel, two teaspoons or eight grams of smoked paprika, two teaspoons or eight grams of garlic, half a teaspoon, two grams of onion powder, one tablespoon or 15 grams of kosher salt, two tablespoons or 30 grams of breadcrumbs. This is really for moisture retention. You can totally leave it out if you want. Two tablespoons or 30 grams of water. Eliminate that if you do not use the breadcrumbs. Mix by hand until fully combined and the sausage is emulsified. Begin heating a large saute pan over medium high heat. While the pan is heating, portion your sausage into three ounce 85 gram patties. Be sure to make the patties wider than your English muffins because they will tighten up and contract during the cooking process. Now once your pan is hot, lightly grease with cooking spray, add in your patties and sear for two to three minutes on both sides to get a nice beautiful browning. And they're just cooked through. Do not overcook these. They will dry out. For each sandwich, split and toast one English muffin in a toaster, not in a pan with butter. Toasters don't require any fat. Now, in a nonstick pan, heat it over medium heat, add just a light spray of cooking oil. Once that's hot, crack an egg into the pan and cook until the whites are fully set, but the yolk is still runny. Season taste with salt and pepper. Now, begin by building the sandwich with an optional, but honestly, surprisingly macro-friendly slice of low-fat American cheese. On the bottom part of your English muffin, honestly, you could use regular American cheese. It would only slightly up the fat, so there's that. You can do that under the broiler. You can use a kitchen torch. Add our sausage. Top with your over-easy egg. Place on your top bun. And guess what? We still managed to cut that fat down by 30%. It comes in with a whopping 39 grams of protein, 28 grams
grams of carbs and 18 grams of fat. That is a lot more diet friendly for a high protein diet, if you ask me. You could always throw another turkey patty on there and it'll be probably upwards of 50 to 60 grams of protein. Don't quote me on that. I'm doing the math in my head and I did not go to college, so you're welcome. It definitely fits my macros for getting shreddy. The sausage egg McMuffin is not necessarily the highest calorie thing, but man, hardly any protein and it's never been good. Come on, you saw this. The gloss. Cheers. I'm blown away by the fact that this is actually juicier, ooey gooier than its counterpart by a lot. Somehow the egg yolk and the cheese form together into a singular sauce. And I actually prefer this sausage patty, but the fact that this is diet friendly, mind boggling. I don't need to say more. Sometimes you just gotta let the sandwich do the talking for you. All for this macronutrient makeup. This is a perfect breakfast swap. It's not that hard. We're moving on. The fried chicken sandwich. A Popeye's fried chicken sandwich comes in at 700 calories, 42 grams of fat, 50 grams of carbohydrates, and a measly 28 grams of protein. Can you even make this diet friendly? Yeah. This recipe is for four sandwiches. First, we're using chicken thighs. Yep, that's right, pal. You can still use thighs and stay macro friendly. In a small bowl, season your chicken thighs with a mixture of one tablespoon or 12 grams of kosher salt, two teaspoons or eight grams of garlic powder, one teaspoon or four grams of a spicy powder, could be jalapeno, could be cayenne, short took of mine and season your chicken generously on all sides and let that cure in the fridge for at least one hour, but preferably overnight. Now let's start with a sauce, sort of a light ranch, if you will. In a medium sized mixing bowl, combine three quarters of a cup or 180 milliliters of non-fat Greek yogurt, two teaspoons or eight grams of buffalo style hot sauce, one teaspoon or four grams of distilled white vinegar, half a bunch of chives, thinly sliced, which is about two tablespoons, one teaspoon or four grams of Worcestershire sauce, one tablespoon or 15 grams of mushroom powder, season and taste with salt and pepper, and whisk together until fully combined. Now it's time to, I guess, quotations fry. For years, I feared this day, and you have pushed over and over. It's an air fryer recipe, okay? Preheat your air fryer to 375 Fahrenheit or 190 Celsius and set up a three-step breading process. One tray or bowl with about a cup of all-purpose flour, another with four to five egg whites, whisk together, and another with crushed corn flakes. Now remember, Use one hand for dry stuff and the other hand for wet stuff. So coat your chicken thighs in flour, shake off the excess, add your egg white, wash, coat completely, and then transfer to your cornflakes and dredge, pressing aggressively so you coat every single little angle. Repeat with all of your thighs, put in your air fryer, close the door, and cook for 20 to 22 minutes. Obviously flipping them halfway through their cook time just before you put this together. Make a small dainty herb salad comprised of a quarter cup or 14 grams of fresh dill fronds, a quarter cup or 14 grams of mint leaves, and a quarter cup or 14 grams of parsley leaves and a quarter of a red onion shaved as thin as possible. Toss together in a small mixing bowl, and now we assemble. You can eat your buns raw, or you can toast them lightly in a pan using a little bit of nonstick spray to get that toast. Now, spread a small tablespoon-sized dollop of your ranch onto the bottom and top bun, followed by a couple slices of dill pickle. Place your fried chicken thigh onto the sandwich and top with a small handful of your herb salad. And then finally, your top bun. And this comes in at 439 calories, 12 grams of fat, 51 grams of carbs, and 28 grams of protein. But is it really gonna be better I mean, it wasn't even deep fried. Uh, to be fair, this has been sitting in a bag, so it looks clapped, but this looks shockingly good for this. And it is crispy. I will say the air fryer might be onto something. She's juicy. That's a good looking cross section right there. All right, comparison to the unhealthier counterpart. I know you heard that, all right? It's crispy, it's crunchy, it's juicy, it's salty. It's seasoned. I will say the lack of fat does feel like it's missing something, but I'm not unhappy about it. I don't get to eat this on my diet, but I get to eat this. That being said, I do have to give this a little taste. God damn, they really mailed this up. So ironically, I do like the mouthfeel of the fattiness and the oil that's in this, but comparatively, it's not a huge step up flavor wise because it's just like rancid bitter oil. This is clean. It's not too rich. You can eat a bunch of these. You still get that fried chicken crunch that you want. This is the beauty of the sandwich. You're going to make this. It's very easy and you're not going to miss the fried chicken sandwich. You're still going to be able to have that and complete all of your body composition dietary goals you could ever want with a fried chicken sandwich. Moving on. Let's talk chicken cake. Quesadilla. Okay, you go to Taco Bell, you're getting something for 520 calories, 26 grams of fat, 41 grams of carbs, and again, small protein, 26 grams. I think this one we're gonna knock out of the park. We're gonna big time beat out the flavor and the calories on this one. First, marinate your chicken. So to a blender, add one seven ounce or 200 gram can of chipotle peppers in adobo sauce, four cloves of garlic, a third cup or 80 milliliters of water, two teaspoons or eight grams of kosher salt, and one tablespoon or 15 grams of avocado oil. You can totally eliminate that if you don't want the fat, but it'll be a 
minimal addition because it's just the marinade. This makes enough marinade for four total chicken breasts, but we only have two here because we accidentally bought two. Massage the marinade into the chicken. Get it all up in there, you know? You wanna get in them little nooks and crannies. Wrap them with plastic wrap and marinade for at least one hour in the fridge or preferably overnight. I feel like this quesadilla is getting a little extra freshness. So we're making a corn relish, medium sized mixing bowl, adding two ears of fresh corn, two cloves of garlic grated, half a bunch of cilantro, finely chopped, one shallot, finely diced, and one jalapeno, seeded and finely diced. Season and taste with salt, and it's done. Now to cook the chicken, you can do this on a grill, or you can do it in a large saute pan, lightly greased with cooking spray, set over medium high heat. Once it's hot, Add your chicken and sear for two to three minutes per side. Then at that point, you can just constantly flip until fully cooked at an internal temperature of 165 Fahrenheit. Transfer to a cutting board, let that rest a little bit, and then cut into bite-sized pieces. Now look, most of us have made a quesadilla. Let's not overcomplicate this. You add a tortilla to the pan. This could be regular or an eight inch low carb tortilla. We're using the low carb one for our macro breakdown. Follow with an even layer of equal parts, low moisture, skim mozzarella, and reduced fat. And if you wanna keep the calories low, reduced fat cheddar, shredded fresh. I'm not a huge fan of low fat cheeses, unless they are naturally low fat. So try to find that. Spoon on some corn relish, followed by as much chicken as that tortilla can take. Top with just a light sprinkling of additional cheese just to help the other side bind. Fold together, toast for about two minutes, flip and toast for another two to three minutes till golden brown and the cheese is beautifully melted. Look at this thing. So with this, we brought the calories down to 377 for a beautifully cheesy chicken quesadilla. I mean, come on, man. Here's the comparison of macros. Now let's taste. Let's talk about this. Wow. I can't tell the difference between this and and any other quesadilla, genuinely. But we'll try theirs. Here's the thing. This isn't like the worst thing I've ever had from Taco Bell. Cheese, chicken, tortilla, it's not that crazy. The diversity of flavor and texture in this healthy one not only makes it better, but you're not even gonna be thinking about, I'm on a diet when you're eating this. The fact that this is high protein, low calorie, blows my mind. If you fed this to me and said that, I would have no idea. The chicken's juicy, it's seasoned well, it's marinated, it's a little spicy, but just a tiny bit. The pops of the sweet corn. Look, I fucking hate low fat cheddar, but we used it anyway for the sake of the macro composition. It just works well. It might be the most perfect diet food that there is. Moving on. Let's talk about a cheeseburger. Typically, if you go get a smash burger, it's gonna be anywhere from 700 to 1,000 plus calories for one little burger. And it's primarily due to the fact that it is extremely high fat. But that's also why they're so delicious. I wanna clarify something. I love fat, but when you're on a diet, we gotta find a way to make this thing work. So first, our sauce. Low fat cottage cheese, which we blended until completely smooth. This is a fun little trick to get a creamy-like consistency. Optionally, you can also add a quarter cup or 60 grams of light mayonnaise. Again, I'm not a huge fan of artificial low-fat ingredients, but in this case, it does help. Two tablespoons or 30 grams of sambal olek, or any chili garlic sauce, assuming that there's no fat in it. Three cloves of garlic grated, a small handful of very thinly sliced chives, salt and pepper to taste, mixed together until fully incorporated. That's a pretty good looking sauce, I'm not gonna lie. Next, thinly slice one sweet onion, and then a medium saute pan set over medium high heat at a very light drizzle of olive oil. And when I say light, I mean minuscule, like a teaspoon. You don't need a lot. Add in your onions, season to taste with salt, and cook while constantly stirring until lightly softened and browned. Kind of like this. Now, before we cook our burger, I have a secret to keep this 95% lean beef extra juicy. You ever heard of a Cuban Frita burger? But we're using a sauce that that would. In a medium-sized bowl, combine a quarter cup or 60 grams of tomato paste, one teaspoon or four grams of ground cumin, one tablespoon or 15 grams of garlic powder, one teaspoon or four grams of coriander powder, one tablespoon or 15 grams of distilled white vinegar, and three quarters of a cup or 180 milliliters of water. Season to taste with salt and whisk together until homogenous. Then transfer to a squirt bottle, or you could just leave it like that and spoon it on top. That's fine too. Now we cook and assemble. You're gonna need about one and a half pounds of 95% lean ground beef. Break those into three ounce or 85 gram portions roll into balls, and then heat a large cast iron pan or griddle over medium high heat. And once it's hot, Lightly greased with cooking spray. Place a burger ball onto the surface. Using a press or a wide spatula, flatten it as wide as possible. You can also use parchment paper in between that so it doesn't stick to the spatula or press. Remember, you need this wide. It's gonna shrink a lot more because it is leaner. Season generously with salt and pepper to taste. Cook for about a minute. Scrape aggressively underneath and flip. Look at that. I mean, that's a beautiful thing. Now, immediately, put that in a light layer of that spicy tomato sauce you made earlier. It's just gonna add a little extra umami light sweetness. Let that cook for another 30 seconds. Add on a slice of low fat American cheese. That's right. You can also not do cheese and it'll be even more macro friendly. But I want to do this as nasty as possible. Repeat that with a second patty and now we assemble. We got a toasted bun. Don't toast it in butter. A spoonful of your spicy garlic sauce on both the top and bottom bun. About a tablespoon each. And start with a couple pickles, your sweet saucy patties on top of that, and a small amount of your caramelized onion. Take your top bun and crown your king. If you didn't tell me what I was looking at, I'd say that looks like not only a delicious burger, but it looks like something that might be 900 calories. 
this. But it's not, bruv. It's 541 calories, only 15 grams of fat, 36 grams of carbs, and a whopping 60 grams of protein. Isn't that lovely obviously the fat will change depending on whether or not you use cheese now let's taste Woo! okay to be fair this burger has been sitting for a while that's why it looks really bad that being said does this look like a burger that'll have you on a diet hang on that look like a diet burger to you this is made with 95 percent lean beef cheers Oh, this is the one. Yes, we made a lot of great recipes today, but we struck gold with this burger. Think about it. What's the one thing you crave the most when you're on a diet? Whatever that makes you feel, that's how this burger is making me feel. But this burger makes me forget that I'm on one. The biggest hack was this. You have to time it perfectly. When you add this, that burger soaks up all the juice from this Cuban style burger sauce. It is incredible. Now let's try this. That is not worth cheating on my diet for. I can't believe we made this. The addition of that cottage cheese trick completely stepped it up because you're not using all light mayo, you're not using yogurt. It has creaminess just like a mayo. It's juicy, it's unctuous, it's salty, it feels fatty. You got the ooey gooey American cheese. I will say, that's one thing I forgot about. The fat is a little higher because of the American cheese. You could just do one slice and it would still be fantastic. Next up, quesabiria tacos for the restaurant version. We used this recipe in my cookbook, Texture Over Taste, which we calculated to be about 20 to 24 tacos, giving us macros of around 475 calories calories, 35 grams of protein, 30 grams of carbs, and 23 grams of fat, which would be for one taco. Look at this glistening beauty descended from Mount Olympus made for you. With a macro bank above 203 calories, only 6 grams of fat, 12 to 14 grams of carbs, and 21 grams of protein in just one taco. You could eat three to four of these and have a full-blown meal and stay pretty fair on your diet. And guess what, pal? Yeah, it's cheesy too. Carbs will change depending on your tortilla. We're doing normal-sized corn tortillas. Our healthy beer has 60% fewer calories and even more amazing, 75% less fat. So while it's not perfect, it's pretty god dang good. And these can be even more diet friendly if you choose low carb tortillas, but I'm not a huge fan of them, so I'm not gonna necessarily advocate, but hey, you can hit your diet easier that way, blah, blah, blah. Our recipe's gonna call for two pounds or 900 grams of beef shank. There's actually not a lot of intramuscular fat in this. There's a lot of collagen, which is gonna keep it juicy. That's the trick. Now, remove the bone, cut your meat into one inch chunks, slightly grease a heavy bottom seven quart Dutch oven with cooking spray, heat over medium high. Once it's hot, season your beef with salt and pepper, sear your beef in batches for two to three minutes per side till deeply brown. It's got a good old fashioned Maillard on that bad boy. Remove all your beef, set to the side, reduce the heat to medium, add one tablespoon or 15 grams of tomato paste, cook and stir constantly till lightly caramelized about 30 seconds, then add one rough chopped yellow onion, one head of garlic split in half, skin on is fine, saute that till fragrant about 30 seconds, then add two quarts or two liters of a nice beef stock. Increase the heat to medium high, bring to a boil, reduce to low, then add your beef back followed by one bay leaf, one teaspoon or four grams of cumin seeds, two teaspoons or eight grams of black pepper, two teaspoons or eight grams of Mexican oregano, one cinnamon stick, two chili de arbol, two ancho chilies, and two guajillo chilies. You can also increase these amounts. You can do three of each, two and four, follow that with a generous pinch of salt, cover with a lid, and let that simmer for two and a half to three hours. That's not for no reason, because what's gonna emerge is beef so tender that it falls apart when you look at it. But first, open your lid, carefully remove your chilies, add to a blender, along with two cups of the braising liquid, blend on high until completely smooth, pour back into the pot, add your beef to a bowl, shred by hand until incredibly fine, season it with salt and add a little bit of your zhuzh in the pot. Toss together. And now we're ready for the magic. Get a big cast iron skillet or a comal or a plancha, whatever you got. Heat over medium heat. You dunk a corn tortilla all the way into the broth. Remove out of the pan while it's ripping hot. Add a light sprinkling of shredded low moisture skim mozzarella cheese. Typically this would be Oaxaca cheese. Bit disgraceful here, but look, we're trying to make this macro friendly. But it ain't easy, folks. All right, I'm trying. Followed by one and a half to two ounces of your shredded beef per taco. Lightly press it down. Then just let that toast for about one to two minutes. Flip and toast again for another one to two minutes. You pull this thing up and I'm telling you, it's already cheesy. It's dripping. You can give it a little dunk in the jus. I mean, look at this glistening beauty. Now let's taste. You know, I never thought that I'd be able to make birria tacos diet friendly, but here we are. Wow. These birria tacos are from a local restaurant. They're actually extremely good, I will say. How good in comparison? I don't know. Cheers. Oh wait, no, I gotta eat mine. All right, cheers. A little dunk, sink and dink. Mmm. Wow. Hold on. Something's going on in my mouth, and I think I like it. Look, I'm not gonna sit here and lie. Oh wait, I gotta eat this one too. Listen, I'm gonna give you an honest answer. I'm not gonna sit here and lie and say, oh my God, this is exactly like the best birria taco I've ever had. Obviously, the best birria taco, it would be a little fattier, a little richer, a little more beefy, but you know what? To be honest, I don't think a lot of people will be able to tell absolutely major differences here. I think they'll eat it and they go, wow, it's really good. Something's different about this, but I like it. Big win to me. I would say the biggest L here isn't even the beef, it's actually the cheese. I like that fattier, greasier cheese that goes in there and this sort of part 
skim mozzarella is not hitting it on the salt level, so maybe just increase the salt everywhere else. Either way, you have a god dang good period taco. And I'll be honest, I was surprised by the beef shank. When it's trimmed properly, according to Google, it shockingly has remarkably low fat and high protein while not being super dry when you slow cook it. This is a common problem with a lot of slow cooked lean meats, but it's all thanks to the collagen. That's a dub, moving on. Orange chicken. This is arguably, in America, one of the most famous Chinese takeout dishes of all time. Macros for one serving of Panda Express orange chicken is 490 calories, 25 grams of protein, 51 grams of carbohydrates, and 23 grams of fat. Our healthy orange chicken makes for four servings, but the macros for a single serving are 281 calories, 10 grams of fat, 24 grams of carbs, and 24 grams of protein. We reduce the fat by over 50%. Now, we're gonna take four boneless, skinless chicken thighs, not breasts, cut them into bite sized pieces, place four of those into a bowl, season with two teaspoons or six grams of kosher salt, a little pinch of fresh cracked black pepper, one tablespoon or eight grams of grated ginger, toss to combine, and look, you can use this right away or you can wrap it and leave it in the fridge overnight to marinate. Now here's yet another three tier fry setup. That's gonna need one container with one cup or 120 grams of all purpose flour, another container with three beaten egg whites, and another container with one cup or 80 grams of panko breadcrumbs. Now, your chicken pieces are first gonna get tossed in the flour, shake off the excess, then into the egg white wash, coat completely, and then finally into your panko breadcrumbs coating every little crevice. Set to the side and repeat with all chicken pieces. Throw them in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or two or four Celsius for six to eight minutes. Now onto our sauce. Two teaspoons or eight grams of avocado oil goes into a saucepan over medium heat. Add your two red Fresno chilies, finely diced, followed by six cloves of finely chopped garlic, a two inch knob of grated ginger, and a sprinkle of kosher salt. Stir with a rubber spatula and cook until fragrant and the garlic is just barely beginning to toast. You do need to make sure the garlic toasts because if it doesn't, it's gonna taste acrid and bitter. If you're worried about that happening, then add the garlic at the end when the sauce is done and the heat is off. Next, add in the juice of one orange, a third cup or 80 milliliters of soy sauce, a pinch of monk fruit powder to enhance sweetness, three quarters of a cup or 180 milliliters of white distilled vinegar, and lastly, the zest of one orange. Stir, bring that to a boil, reduce the heat to medium low, then we're gonna make a quick slurry. In a small bowl, add one tablespoon or eight grams of cornstarch mixed with a small splash of water. Pour that into your cooking sauce, stir for about 30 seconds or until the sauce thickens, cut off the heat, pass through a fine mesh strainer and you have your sauce. Now, our chicken comes out the oven, into a bowl. Coat with your sauce generously and toss to coat fully. Pop that onto a plate. You can serve this with rice, vegetables, whatever you want. Top with a little green onion, maybe a little sprinkle of flaky salt. And let's give this a little taste test. Wow, we're on the Chinese takeout train. Let's get it. I'll be honest, that baked chicken looks god awful, but I can look past it because the sauce saves it. I mean, even with a subpar starting chicken, still looks better than the takeout version, but does it taste better? They both have their pros and cons. Although I prefer the ridiculous sweetness in this, it does taste good. There's something special about this just being salty and sour, nice. Like not everything has to be sweet. If you're deep in your diet and you're really craving orange chicken, this is gonna go above and beyond your expectation. It is gonna give you ooey gooey, crunchy, salty, a little bit sweet, tangy, sauced faux fried chicken. You always lose the majority of the crunch when you make. <laughs> Spilled my fucking chicken. What I was gonna say was you almost always lose the breading whenever you sauce your chicken. So the benefit of this is that the breading from a baked fried chicken is never gonna be comparable to a legit fried chicken that's deep fried. But somehow the texture of that exterior meets up with something that was deep fried. I don't know how, because the way that the sauce reduces the crispiness brings it to the same level of crunch as if it were deep fried. You don't even have to make this. Just the idea of saucing oven baked fried chicken might be something there. That being said, moving on. So our diet friendly peanut noodles, again, you have two options. Option one, no chicken breast, comes up to 530 calories, 70 grams of fat, 64 grams of carbs, 26 grams of protein for a single serving. We decrease the calories by 60% and the fat by 80%. Option two, with a seven ounce chicken breast, which is 873 calories, only 26 grams of fat, 64 grams of carbs, and 87 grams of protein. We decrease the calories by 35% and the fat by 70%. Adding protein, even if it's lean, still adds calories, pal. That's basically a Chipotle burrito bowl for a single serving. This is a protein slap in the croissant and honestly not a ton of peanut flavor loss Which I'm super stoked about so cook and drain one pack of instant ramen noodles or any noodle you want to use You want to use some sort of low-carb weird noodle that I'm not a huge fan of then fine You want to use straight ramen noodles you can do that too But just be aware that it will change the carbohydrate breakdown depending on how much you use in a medium mixing bowl Add two-thirds of a cup or 75 grams of peanut powder two tablespoons or 30 grams of rice wine vinegar One tablespoon or 15 grams of sambal olek a quarter cup or 60 grams of soy sauce three cloves of garlic grated whisk together till combined 
Now you're gonna cook your noodles to the package directions, and this is enough for two servings. Pop onto a plate, top with a sliced cooked chicken breast. You can cook it however you want. It can be grilled or seared, but grilled obviously is the lowest calorie option. But Josh, what about the protein? How do I know how much? Look, a whole chicken breast can be anywhere between six to 10 ounces, so it could vary a little bit. Garnish it with thinly sliced green onion, and you have your peanut noodles. It's really that easy. I'm really excited to see how this does with the peanut powder. People have been using this hack in the diet space for a long time, in smoothies, making fake peanut butter, and I've always hated it. But now all of a sudden I'm thinking, wait a minute, that's kind of low-key fine dining and could be a sauce. Here we go. It's pretty good. Honestly, not as much flavor as I was expecting, but I can feel the mouth feel that creaminess. The peanut butter, it's fatty. I really hope this holds up. All right, now for mine. First off, way juicier looking. That is crazy, whoa. You still get that creamy mouthfeel somehow. The penis is emulsified with the starch water and all the other ingredients in there. It's just become this sort of like emulsified creamy mass. The texture is really similar. It doesn't have that stick to the root of your mouth texture, but the peanut flavor is there. It's creamy, it's got umami, it's lightly sweet, it's salty. If you add actual peanut butter, you might get a little more creaminess. It might be a little bit more rich for significantly more calories and fat. Hear me out. I still would choose the peanut butter from a chef's perspective, but if you're on a diet, I don't think you're gonna be missing that peanut butter is right here, baby. Moving on. Next up, pizza. For the restaurant pizza, one slice from Papa John's 16 inch extra large sausage pizza is 340 calories, 12 grams of protein, 40 grams of carbohydrates, and 15 grams of fat. That's for one slice. Mix together half a cup or 80 milliliters of water and two teaspoons or eight grams of instant yeast. Add your yeasty water to one cup or 240 milliliters of yogurt. Mix that together, then in a large bowl with one and a quarter cup or 150 grams of double O tipo flour, or all purpose is fine. Add one teaspoon or four grams of fine sea salt. Add your yogurty water yeast juice. Mix until you get a rough dough, then knead until smooth, about three to five minutes. That is your dough. Cover that and let it rise for about an hour or until doubled or leave it in the fridge covered overnight. Now for the sauce, a 20 ounce can or 790 grams of peeled tomatoes into a food processor, just the tomatoes, not the liquid. Three whole cloves of garlic, also into the food processor. One tablespoon or 15 grams of olive oil. You can skip that, but really it's a minimal amount of fat because you're not gonna use all this sauce on a single pizza. Season it taste with salt, blend until as smooth as possible. Press the dough out into a circular shape as wide as you can get it. This will stretch through anywhere between 12 to 15 inches. So it's a little smaller than the extra large Papa John's pizza. Spread the sauce on your dough, about two ounces or 56 grams. Sprinkle on low fat, low moisture mozzarella, about two cups or 180 grams. You're gonna take the exact same meat from the breakfast burrito, same cooking method, everything. And you're gonna spread about six ounces or 170 grams on the pizza as well. Top that with a little extra sprinkling of cheese if you like. Pop that into a pizza oven at 650 degrees Fahrenheit for four to five minutes or until it comes out looking like this. Now, wait, I know what you're thinking. Josh, I don't have a pizza oven. You can literally just do the same thing in a regular oven with a baking stone at the highest temperature it goes, make sure to preheat your oven for at least an hour, and the cook time will change from four to five minutes to about 10 to 15 minutes. Once it's done, pull it out and cut your pizza into eight slices. It's gonna cut the amount of fat down by half, 35% fewer calories and carbohydrates at a total of 224 calories, 14 grams of protein, 26 grams of carbs, and only seven grams of fat. So our pizza has 50% less fat than the Papa John's pizza. Now, if you already eat four slices of this pizza, that would be equal to roughly a high protein Chipotle burrito bowl. I mean, but you got to eat pizza. This is as close to real pizza as you can get while somewhat staying on a lower calorie diet without some stupid cauliflower crust. Wow, bonjour. Maybe it's the fact that I haven't had a cheat day in two weeks, but this feels like I'm making love. I'm not gonna lie. I'm sure people are gonna be like, oh, come on, man, come on. Dude. The crust is a little different, I will say. I think the yogurt breaks down the gluten a little bit. So you don't get as much chew. It's a little softer, but it's still crisp. It's still a nice dough. It's got a little of acidity from the yogurt, which I kind of like. In terms of the cheese and toppings, I would have no clue that this is like a lower fat topping. You can see that this isn't super oily. I'd have no idea that it was skim milk. It has a better cheese pull. It's chewier. Honestly, I think if someone delivered this to my house, even if I was off diet, I would still be happy to eat it. I wouldn't be like, oh, give me a normal pizza. And now for the unhealthy version. Mmm, hang on, I gotta go over here real quick. <laughs> Could it be better with lots of fat and oil on it? In some contexts, yes, but honestly, I don't feel like I'm missing anything at all between this pizza and the other pizza. Obviously, it's not the easiest thing to eat every single thing you could possibly want and also be on a diet. The whole point of being on a diet is to be restrictive, but with a little bit of creativity and a little bit of intentionality, you can eat the majority of the things that are reminiscent to what you love and get pretty darn close and stay on diet. That's what this video is about. Love you and have a wonderful day. You get the side stitch. <sighs> Subscribe. Subscribe.